DFG Science TV, Stone Age Giants, the Trail of Rocks, from portal tombs to graves and their builders. Who were the people who built the megalithic graves? Where were they from and how were they related to each other? This is the question Dr. Rebecca Renneberg, who's working on the Human Development in Landscapes project, hopes to be able to answer soon. Using ancient DNA, also known as ADNA, she is examining about 450 samples dating from the Neolithic period. That corresponds to about 200 individuals. When archaeologists come up against their limits, molecular genetics can help out, because DNA isn't only found in the blood, but also in bones and teeth. To make sure that no foreign DNA is able to falsify the results, it's essential to work in an absolutely sterile environment. While I'm working on my bones, I may also give off tear fluid, I lose flakes of skin, I might shed a hair, and I may also produce spittle. And these signals from me would interfere with all the information in the bones if my DNA were to get onto the bones in any way. And we really need to wear very effective protective clothing just to protect the bones. It's not that we need to protect ourselves from the bones. We aren't so much afraid of there being viruses or bacteria on them that might give us some kind of illness. At the end of the day, we just want to protect the bones. The chromosomes, which contain the genetic material, are inside the cell nuclei, which need to be broken open. This job is done for the researchers by a pipetting robot. Since the ADNA is often badly preserved, meaning that it contains very little useful material, the DNA is then artificially replicated or stretched. This is essential to be able to perform a worthwhile analysis of it. It may happen that for person A the teeth work well for the DNA analysis, but not for person B. We don't know the exact reasons for this yet. Unfortunately, we have conducted far too few studies on this topic in DNA research, but we hope that this will improve and that we gain a better understanding of why this is in the future. So we can never say in advance, well, your symmetries will work or they won't work. Using a special gel, the researchers check whether the replication had the desired results. And the answer is yes, it has worked. Rebecca now has a genetic fingerprint of a Neolithic person. Only once all of the genetic material from all of the bones and teeth is available, will it be possible for Rebecca to begin with the evaluation and find out how closely these people were related to each other. To get an overall result of the findings from all of the disciplines involved in the priority program, it's important to discuss and share the findings. Find out what progress they've all made so far in the next episode. Visit DFG Science TV for more information. Awaken the researcher within you.